All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Michael Alshuler, who is in a probably equally or maybe even more sunny Florida. How are you doing, Michael? I'm doing great, John. How are you, my friend? Great, and it's great to welcome Michael back. And Michael is a top rated motivational speaker, success and career coach enterprise sales expert as well as best-selling author and host of the popular podcast shows the results podcast and get hired with job gladiator and actually michael is also an international man of magic he is uh, if you ever get to see michael not only will you get wisdom and insight but you get some really cool magic tricks too right <laughs> but yeah but it's it's uh pretty amazing i in fact last night i went out to dinner and believe it or not i made all my food disappear it was amazing <laughs> yeah that's one you'll uh you could i don't think you need to teach many people that one but no, uh, many people so, have that trick exactly and what we're going to talk about today is making a difference and leaving a legacy like how to live a right side up life in an upside down world and you know let's face it michael uh so many people are, are i think we're living in an age of mass confusion right i mean people don't know what's up what's up or down uh and so i mean this topic is a really really interesting one um and what what, what prompted you because this is one of the ones that you speak about what prompted you to speak on this subject in particular i think originally i have to say god placed it in my heart to be kind to love to make a difference leave the world better than i found it I genuinely care about people. And I think today more than ever, uh, with the name of the speech, it really speaks volumes about the, the world that we live in. You know, uh, make a difference, leave a legacy, had a little right side of life in an upside down world. So many challenges, so many obstacles we have personally and professionally and worldwide. And uh, what does it really take to make a difference, to, to leave that legacy? How do we do that? with awareness and intentionality. And uh, when you're ready, I have a few stories I'd love to share in terms of how I do it. And I think how others can do it also to make other people's lives better, because you never know what's going on beneath the scenes in someone's life. They, everyone's carrying some type of burden. Everyone listening to this right now uh, is dealing with a very serious, either financial issue, health issue, relationship issue personally, or uh, a close family member or friend. Mm -hmm. And so, we don't escape that in life. And, uh, you know, the question is, how do we not just survive, but how do we thrive? And I believe it's kindness, it's giving, it's love, it's compassion. And then how do we demonstrate that in our daily lives? Yeah, because as, as you say, I mean, people, are, there's a lot of stuff people are going through. And, and the problem is, often, Michael, is we live in this very, very superficial world and we're almost encouraged to be surface level and superficial and to take everything at face value and just to react, react, react to things, not to digest them, not to investigate them, not to really dig a little deeper. And also, uh, you know, the, the strength of your reaction, it's like, you know, everybody wants to react robustly to everything, it seems, today, instead of taking that step back. So, as you say, I mean, I'd love to hear some of your, your stories and insights. And how do you make that first step in maybe being intentional about how you approach the world and maybe move beyond the superficiality? Yeah, I, the first step always for everyone, and, and most people, unfortunately, are not super clear on this, is having a core set of values, a hierarchy of values. Uh, Barkowski said, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. <laughs> uh, my buddy Zig Ziglar, my mentor, and also who became a friend and a client of mine for a product I had, uh, he said, there's two types of people in the world, wandering generalities and meaningful specifics. The wandering generalities let the tide of life take it where it might. Mm -hmm. And meaningful specifics know who they are, what they are, who they want to become, where they're going and why they're going there. And what does that take? Well, if you want to live a life with peace, joy, and fulfillment, and I think at the end of the day, we all want that, then we have to be clear on who we are and who we want to become. And I have five values that guide my life, and they are to honor and serve the Lord with everything I think, say, and do, be the best husband to my amazing wife, Emmy, to be the best dad to my amazing son, Kyle, my two stepsons, Dex and Julian, 
to serve others with the gifts, talents, and abilities I've been blessed with. And I work hard on improving to make a difference in their lives. And my number five is to be in the best mental, physical, and spiritual shape to serve those other four values. Because my battery is not full. I can't fill someone else's. Now, here's the thing. Once you're clear on your values and they're in a hierarchy of importance, the, the most important thing is you have to, A, be aware. That's number one. Be aware throughout the day with everything you're thinking, saying, and doing. Nothing falls outside of that. Am I thinking about my values? Because you can't do something if you're not thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about my values. The second kind of guidepost, if you will, is am I doing it? Am I living it? And the challenge we have, I'm a nine in terms of awareness because I've been doing it so long. It's part of who I am. So I'm aware in every situation, sometimes after the fact, but I'm always <laughs> aware that am I doing what I, am I thinking what I should be thinking now to take the proper actions, to serve the Lord, be a good husband, be a good dad, to serve others, et cetera. The second rating that you rate yourself, I like to say one to 10, is am I doing it? That's infinitely much harder because the world puts so much pressure on us and it starts controlling us versus us controlling it. Meaning right. we're not the outside world's controlling our inside world with all the pressures and media and social media, et cetera. So the, 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 to answer your question, it's values that determine and dictate what you say and what you do throughout the day. So when I going to church makes you no more a good Christian than going to McDonald's makes you a hamburger. Yeah. <laughs> you, you have to, you have to live it out. And the only way you live it out, if that's a cornerstone or a value of yours, is to say, be intentional and aware, what's my value if I see an old lady putting groceries in her car, then I'm aware that the God, God would want me to go and help her. Mm -hmm. So it's his to-do list, not my to-do list. So I go over and I help. So that, yeah. I, I, I just want to share, may I share a quick story with you? Yes, please do. Okay. So every day on Sunday, every Sunday after church, I go to a, a food store we have here called Trader Joe's mm -hmm. and I buy a dozen roses and I go out in the parking lot. And I give every woman a rose. And just to say, I'd like to, this is, this cost me $10. Right. And the impact it has is on some people is immeasurable. And I'll, I'll tell you two stories that happen that will really kind of put a stamp and say, wow, you can really change a, a moment, an hour, a day, a month, and maybe even a life. Um, when you do something like this, so small, takes 15 minutes, $10, and it's a life changer. Now, before I tell you this, and before I tell your listeners this, the first time I ever did this, I was with my son, Kyle. He was around seven years old. I said, Kyle, we're going to buy a dozen roses and go out in the parking lot and give it to every woman in the parking lot. I didn't care if they were old or young, attractive or unattractive. I didn't care about their nationality, their race, creed, nothing. Just every woman gets a rose. And I didn't realize, John, that I would have a problem. There would be a challenge. In fact, there would be two challenges that were totally unexpected. When I went to give a rose to the young women, they thought I had an ulterior motive. Sure. And the old women wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> as, as funny as that sounds, and sometimes we embellish stories as speakers to make a point, sure. there's no embellishment there. That literally, to this day, I've done it. 30, 40, 50 times in my, in my adult life, that still happens that why does someone give me this? What do they want? That's a natural reaction yeah. for a young woman to have when a guy goes up to her and the old women, you know, I'm dressed nice after church thinking, I hope this guy's single, you know, <laughs> what are you doing later? So, and it's a challenge, but most of the time it's not, it's not, they, they understand why I'm doing it. Cause I say it right away here. I'd like you to have a rose just to make your day a little brighter. And I kind of say that all in one sentence. So they know there's no ulterior motive. Mm -hmm. So uh, two, the two stories I wanted to share with you and, and your audience is this going back around 10 years ago. I, I buy the, the dozen roses and uh, I'm in a parking lot at Pub this is Publix. It's not Trader Joe's now, another food store. And there's a woman that I'm giving a rose to and I see one walking by me. So now her back is to me because she's heading towards her car. So I give the one rose away and noticing the woman who's back to me, I kind of run up to her without, you know, her thinking that I'm attacking her mm -hmm. I said, excuse me and she turns around and i said i said here i like you to have this rose and she like looks at me and says uh, what for and i said just to random act of kindness to make your day a little brighter and her eyes started welling up with tears 
And I said, can I ask you a question? She said, yes. I said, why are your eyes welling up with tears? And she said, well, you don't understand. I, I work in Palm Beach Gardens Hospital in the PQ unit. That's pediatric intensive mm -hmm. care unit. And we had three babies die this past week. And it's been the roughest, hardest week I've ever had in my life. And nothing good has happened until now. Wow. And you don't know how much this means to me. And at this point, tears are streaming, streaming down her face. And she said, can I hug you? And I said, of course. And we hugged. And uh, we've been married now for eight years, have three kids. Now that part. <laughs> that, that part I embellished and made up for a comical anecdote at the end. But up to the point of the embrace. And then I said, have a, I hope your day and your week improves. And that was really the end of it. And uh, just very, very special. And, you know, just this past weekend when I did it, people said, you know, my husband passed away around a month ago and I never, he used to buy me flowers. I never get flowers anymore. And right. you don't know what this means to me. Yeah. And, and just those things. And someone's with a little daughter. And I say, here, I'd like you to have this. And I give one to the little daughter who's around five or six years old. And they're, they're like in amazement. And they get to see that kindness, random acts mm. of kindness, if we all do that, one person at a time, the world can get a little better. And as I bring that to the universe, to one person at a time, I get that back in spades because yeah. it fills up my heart. Yeah. And, you know, Michael, what's what's really interesting about that, and I love, I love that story, is that we become, you know, with this social media and all of that, but we become like people are great at pontificating about huge global issues and this, and regardless of what it is, and they, you know, sit there at the weekend or whatever with a beer in their hand and like going, oh, ranting about the world. But if they took a moment to do what you do, right, where touch people in their community, or as you said at the beginning, just start off with being, how can I be the best person? How can I be the best partner to my spouse or whatever, the best father to my children, the best person in the com in, in my neighborhood or whatever it is? The impact of that is massive. The impact of sitting pontificating about the world and its problems is zero. <laughs> it's negative. It's actually negative. Yeah. <laughs> it's not only zero, it'll, it'll make you down and you know, if you can't do anything about it, you know, what value does it serve? And it's certainly not going to lift you up if you look at all the problems, unless you have the ability to change them. And it really, you know, to, to your point, it becomes a ripple effect. Yeah. So certainly, you know, if, if you, I think there was a movie called Pay It Forward. If you yeah. look at the impact this has, um, you know, I go to the dollar store also and I pay for, you know, five or 10 people in line and people are stunned. And I have people in their 70s. This is crazy to me. Crazy in their 70s, in a dollar store. Now they've made tens of thousands of purchases mm. over their lifetime if they're 70 years old in small stores, whether Wawa, 7-Eleven, little grocery store, the little uh, uh, stores attached to gas stations. They've made thousands, tens of thousands of purchases. They would look at me and say, you're kidding. No one has ever done this for me before. And I can't believe that with thousands of opportunities for people to spend three dollars it has nothing to do with the cost yeah it has to do with the act of kindness to a complete stranger and they're, they're like stunned they said are you sure i said it's three dollars i'm just grateful we're not in a car showroom right now <laughs> the lamborghini showroom <laughs> exactly and they and they laugh so it takes the pressure off them that this is nothing but literally it doesn't matter whether it's three dollars or eight dollars the, the cost has zero to do with it it's all about doing something kind whether it's going up to an, anyone listening to this, going up to a, a woman that you see, an older lady or anyone saying, that's a beautiful hat, or that's a beautiful dress. To an elderly person, that would mean the world to anyone, a sincere compliment. Just mm -hmm. take that time out. But you have to be aware and intentional and understand the value and importance in a world that is so troubled. And with everyone dealing with, with issues and challenges in their own world, uh, these little acts of kindness, sincere compliments, Mother Teresa said evangelization begins with a smile, looking at someone and smiling, saying, good morning. Yeah. How are you this morning? Just those little things can right. shift a person's yeah. day, week or month. And and like you said, it just has, it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be some massive gesture. I had, a, I had a lovely experience about a year ago. I was going in here at, in, in Carlsbad. I was going into the city hall for, for I don't know, for some reason. And there's a little kind of cafe outside. And as I was coming back out, there were these two older women sitting there knitting. 
and I did a double take because I hadn't seen people knitting in years. <laughs> and it just reminded me of my, my dear departed mother, who was, gr was always knitting. Like any time anyone had a baby, she'd be knitting. She'd be knitting iron sweaters. She was a great knitter. And I just stopped and went back and I said, I just want to say thank you. And they were like, what? And I said, I haven't seen people knitting in forever. And you just reminded me of my mother because she was a great knitter. And... And they were like smiling and going, oh, that's fantastic and everything. And I and and to be honest, I went away with a phenomenal feeling because they just gave me a gift without knowing it. Yeah, yeah. And and that's it. Like, you know, like you said, it, it's it has nothing to do with a purchase. It has to do with kindness and sweetness and love. You know, you can never go wrong with those things. And but you have to be consciously aware of it. And I promise you, once you start it, then you'll understand the feeling that it's almost like a selfish way to be unselfish because yeah. I think I, when I'm done, I feel like I'm 20 pounds lighter. I feel like I'm kind of floating. My heart is filled up. Uh, I just feel wonderful. And uh, it's a great way to live. A great way to live is to give, to be grateful, to love. And uh, if you're having a bad day, just go out and do something nice for someone. Call yeah. someone, pay them a compliment. Just want to call a friend up and say, I just want to let you know that I really value and cherish our friendship. You're a good person, and I'm so grateful you're in my life. You know what that means to her? I had a, a, someone send me a, a message like that the other day, and I, I think, wow, just a little. And it's it's when you take time out. It's yes. the thoughtfulness. When you take time out to do something nice for someone that you're thinking about, I can't believe he took time out. To do that it's like getting a, a card versus a text yeah. for your birthday i i oftentimes say when a, a friend of mine has a birthday I, I call him up i say listen some people you send a text to that are having a birthday some people you email some people you put a little special message on social media but the people you really love that you really care about yeah you call you call and then you know they're listening to this whole thing and and they smile and and you know what it's the truth Mm -hmm. It's the truth because time, when you give your time to someone else, that demonstrates one of my favorite quotes by Maya Angelou is people won't remember what you said and people won't remember what you did, but people will always remember how you made them feel. Yeah. Yeah. And, then, and then what are the things you do to make people feel special? Yeah. And what I like, Michael, just going back to going back to what you said at the start, what I like is when you went through, you know, here's my core set of values, um, they were all external in external in terms of they were like to serve your god to you know be the best husband to your wife to be the best father to you all of that it's all in this it's all external right and uh, rather than just saying like oh i'm going to be this or i'm going to be that and these are my principles they're actually service oriented principles and the other thing just to follow on from what you just said there about time is Everybody claims to be, this is, oh, we busier than we've ever been in our whole lives. I mean, I'm sick of hearing people tell me that they're busier than they've ever been in their whole lives. And my answer to this is always, are you though? Or are you just more distracted than you've ever been in your life? Because you have your stupid phone here constantly, but you're, look, you're here, there and everywhere and you can't focus. So when people, when you say like taking the time out, people have the time, they just need to actually recognize that they do have the time that they are they're doing all of these other things that are meaningless as opposed to doing things that are meaningful i love that instead of meaningless meaningful and and the question you know as an executive coach a success coach i always say okay that's fine and i agree and most people would agree but why don't we do it and how do we do it mm -hmm. what holds us back from doing it and that goes back to the very beginning of what's most important to us and that's what we stand for who we are call it your moral compass call it your standards you know companies have corporate values or corporate standards or corporate culture this is who we are as a company this is what we stand for this is what we want to be known for what we want to be judged for and 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 uh, you know when you stand for something it moves you towards that it's your compass it's your north star and it's it's a goal and it starts really at the core level is at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I think when you peel back the onion far enough, what we all want is more peace, joy, and fulfillment. All mm -hmm. these things that we work towards, 
Why do we want them? If we keep asking that question, why are they important? What do we get from them? And you keep asking that question, why? Well, why is that important? Okay, you answer it. And, well, why is that important? You answer it. And ask yourself this as you're listening to this, uh, this episode right now. Ask yourself, what do I want? And then once you answer that question, say, well, why do I want it? And mm -hmm. say, well, why is that important to me? Why do I want that? And you're always going to get back to it. It makes you feel a certain way. It's either going to be fulfilling, it's going to give you peace, or it's going to give you joy. Yeah. Okay? And when you win, you want to win because it gives you joy. It's it's fulfilling. So <laughs> at, when we lay our head on the pillow at the end of the day, at the end of your life, you want to say, I did things that gave me the greatest amount of peace, joy, and fulfillment. And that's done when you're consistent and congruent with your values. Your values are really what you say is most important in your life. Mm -hmm. And you know, they say in business, you know, what's the highest and best use of your time right now? We go, what's the highest and best use of your time? That's a great thing to ask in business and in life. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of things to your point, John, a lot of things that are thrown at us. I have a million, there's a million things in my path and yours and everyone listening to this. A million things you got to do. How do you prioritize those with most, what's most important to you according to what you say in your values? Yeah. You can't let your values be on the sideline. They have to be in the forefront of your life. Yeah. And and just one last thing, Mike, because you mentioned there about, uh, you know, figuring out what do you want? And it's an interesting question because oftentimes when people are, you know, frustrated or or, or they're, they're with their life or they're unsettled or whatever, and you ask them, you know, what do you want? What do you want to do? They can't tell you. They can tell you everything they don't want to do, everything they don't want, but they can't tell you what they want. And so... I think if if there's if there's one thing that that people should invest the time in there is that in figuring out exactly what they want and then to your point not just what they want but why they want it. Yeah, that's that's so important. You know, when I do career coaching, you know what we do, and I, I wrote a book about this, how to land your dream job. I wrote it during the pandemic to help people, you know, live a life for taking care of a family. It's not just they lost a job; they lost yeah. their ability to take care of their family. So you want to identify. First and foremost, what are what's my what do I think my purpose is here on earth? What's my passion? What are my skills, talents, and abilities? What skills, talents, and abilities do I need to learn to pursue my passion and my purpose? So once you get in alignment with those things, when you're trying to identify, and then like anything else in business or in life, you got to try stuff. Yeah. You, see, you know, I have a buddy who thought he wanted to be a lawyer, loved being a want to be a lawyer, tried it. Hated it, became an entrepreneur, left the field. So there's many things. I use an example of you go to the store with your friend or your significant other and you see a shirt on the rack and your wife says, or your husband says, try it on. He said, no, I don't like it. Try it on. And you try it on and it looks great. So yeah. I love it. And conversely, sometimes you see something on the rack and say, I love this. And you try it on, it looks like crap. <laughs> Some things you just got to try on. And that's in life. You say, I think I'll love this. But then you try and say, ah. I don't, I don't like this at all. And, and that will help you figure it out. So there's no perfect formula to figuring out what you want to do in life. You have to try different things yeah. and then start putting the pieces together. I love being around people. I love being alone in an office. I love doing things that make a difference, maybe charitable work. But start with what are my passions? What's my purpose? What are my skills, talents, and abilities that will serve those passions and purposes and experiences? And then go from there. Yeah, no, hundred percent. As I always, I always say to people, and it's just based on my own life experience, is that, you know, sometimes you take a path; it doesn't lead to a destination. It leads to other paths that lead to destinations. And but if you don't take the, you may take a path and think, oh, well, that was a mistake. And I go, no, it was never a mistake. It, it led you to another path and to another direction, to a different destination. That's all. Yeah, you, you know, I know we're finishing up right now. Yeah. As you know, I like to finish with a a, a poem. Uh, do we have time for me to finish? Yes, this? please, please. Okay. Uh, coming from Ireland, you know, we're we're a nation. Everybody in Ireland, as you throw a stone out a window, you'll hit a poet. <laughs> That's true. In fact, one of the poems I used to use or used to share, excuse me, was the I I, I don't remember now, it was 15, 20 years ago, but was an Irish uh, uh, poem that about let the winds be behind you. May the oh, winds yeah. always be yeah. behind your sails. So, yeah. You know the one I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. May the wind always be at your back. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. That's that's the one. Yeah. So I, I want to share with everyone in, in closing. 
around 15 years ago, I was doing a speech and it was make a difference, leave a legacy, how to live a right side of life, an upside down world. I do ones on peak performance and sales and, and I do one on communication, but this one happened to be the make a difference, leave a legacy. And after the speech, as a speaker, I love when people come up and they tell me they really needed to hear this, that it really landed on their heart more than their head. That it landed on their heart, that it made an impact because that's really, this is my passion. My purpose is speaking and coaching to make a difference in people's lives. And I'm blessed to be able to do that. So she came up after the talk and she said, I just want you to know, I heard your speech and I really needed to hear that message today. And it really made a difference in my life. Thank you. We talked a little longer and she left. She went her way. I went my way. Two weeks later, I get an email from her. Her name's Lynn Gidro. I still remember 15 years ago with tens of thousands of people I spoke to, but her I remember. And uh, she said, I'm writing you, Michael, because sadly, two weeks ago, my grandmother passed away. And at my grandmother's funeral, they read a poem. And this poem really tugged at my heart. And when it tugged at my heart, it made me think of your speech and how that tugged at my heart in a very similar way. And then I thought to myself, you know what? I bet Michael would really love this poem. I'm going to send it to him. And she looked up the poem and she emailed it to me. And this is all in the email. And I read the poem and it was the most special poem I've ever read in my life. And from that moment on, 15 plus years ago, I have not closed any speech, whether it's a high powered sales speech or peak performance or communication, every speech and, and meeting like this, I close with this poem. Thanks to Lynn Gidro and her blessed grandmother. It's called The Dash by Linda Ellis. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on her tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noticed it first came her date of birth and spoke the second date with tears. But he said that what mattered most of all was that dash between those years. For it matters not how much we have, the car, the house, the cash. What matters how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that could still be rearranged. If we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real and always try to understand the way other people feel. If we could be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love, love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we could treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, Will you be proud of the things they say about how you spent your dash? And it's my sincerest hope, wish, and prayer that everyone listening to this spends their dash in a way that will make a real difference in the lives of their coworkers, their customers, their friends, but most importantly, their loved ones. Yeah. Yeah. So, Michael, um, that's beautiful. And can I just tell you, somebody recited that at the graveside of my mother when she was being buried um uh, and it was and uh, it was during the pandemic and uh she didn't die back in ireland she didn't die of covid it was like old age and all that but i had i had the greatest gift ever because i'm a, I'm a dual irish and, and u.s citizen that i was able to go home get into ireland because i was a citizen and still be able to get back into the states because i was a citizen a time when nobody could get into you know you couldn't get into countries if you were not citizens i was able to go home be with her in her last few days be with her as she passed and crossed over and that poem was somebody recited that at her graveside so thank you for that wow. actually that's that that's a very beautiful moment wow wow the, between that and the knitting john's going to take the rest of the day off and and, and meditate and think yeah. wow, he's got <laughs> these great memories mom in heaven that's, exactly that's beautiful, brother beautiful yeah. good, to, good to hear it yeah, listen, thanks again, Michael. And uh, before we go, Michael, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. But I would just encourage people, if you have if you have conferences, if you need a keynote speak, if you want somebody who's going to be a little bit different and uplift people, be entertaining, be be insightful and and touch your heart. Michael is a man. Go. I would I would highly, highly, highly recommend you go book Michael and Michael. Just tell people a little bit about what you do. Well, thank you. I, my mother couldn't have said any better. Speaking about mothers, yeah. she was my, big, my biggest cheerleader. 
Uh, well, just very, very briefly, I, I built a company when I was younger, 21 years old, out of a 650 square foot apartment, built it to a multi-million dollar company, sold it to a multi-billion dollar company. So where I speak from is not only from experience that I understand business and the grind, uh, I understand sales, uh, enterprise sales and high ticket sales. Donald Trump, there's no political uh, endorsement one way or another. He was my largest customer from Atlantic City, New Jersey. So all his casinos were my clients. But I understand at a very deep level from living it, uh, the ups and downs, the challenges of business and what it takes to really drive success personally and professionally. And then I'm an avid, I hang out with people much smarter than me, which a lot of times it's not a difficult thing for me to do. So uh, if you go to my my podcast, it's uh, Sharks from Shark Tank and and um, the, uh, just tons of very, very successful people. And I'm always learning, always growing. I think that's as Ray Kroc, the founder of McDonald's said, when you're green, you grow. When you're ripe, you rot. Always be growing, learning and transforming, getting better. And so that's really what my four talks are about. So if you have a sales team, enterprise or high ticket, uh, I can help you. Uh, we can certainly have a conversation to see if I can help you or something on performance, how we drive consistency and elevated performance. Every company is challenged with consistency and always driving the numbers higher. Then communication, the art and science of effective communication, super fun. All these are very interactive programs, a lot of audience participation, uh, very, uh, very entertaining. That's important to keep everyone's attention. But also, I believe in giving someone actionable takeaways that they leave and can apply this stuff uh, to live a better life or be more successful at work, and then to make a difference talk. I do executive coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and also success coach, uh, uh, career coaching for those uh, uh, folks looking to land a new job, new career, et cetera. And I do morning huddles, 15-minute huddles to drive consistency in organizations. Well, that took up another 20 minutes. Right yeah, now. yeah, yeah. And by the way, Michael is always available in the uh, Trader, Trader Joe's parking lot on Sunday morning, oh, distributing oh, roses. <laughs> you, if you need to pick me up, and it's it's in uh, it's in Boca Raton, Florida. Come by. Uh, I'm there around 11:30 in the morning, and I promise you'll get a rose. Uh, it'd be funny if thousands turned up. <laughs> I, would, I would love that. I would, I would love that. Make sure you tell me you're on the show, and that's exactly. where you're. Exactly. Yeah. All of Michael's information will be below this video. So as I said, I encourage you to go reach out. Thanks again, Michael. We could probably go on for another few hours, but uh, I'll let you get back to your day. Thank you for watching, listening, and I will see you all again very soon. Bye, everyone. Thanks for listening. John, thank you, my friend. Of course.